what's up guys Ryan here uh, with the Rona project and I'm going to be doing our first character description um, on one of my favorite characters of the story Chapin Greenleaf I think it's important to note that uh, this character was modeled after my grandfather Jacinto Sergovia the character uh, I developed during a time when I couldn't get enough of Miyazaki or Studio Ghibli films uh, those not familiar with Studio Ghibli Recent films include uh, Princess Mononoke, House Moving Castle, Spirited Away, Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, those are definitely my favorite animation feature films. Um, some of those are from the late 90s, early 2000s. I think Kiki's Delivery Service was in the 80s. Um, and um, for those of you who have seen those or are familiar with Studio Ghibli, you can probably get an idea for what kind of character Chapin Greenleaf is. So my plan here is to uh, break the character down into three different sections. Personality, features, specs, and history. Features and specs kind of go in one category for me. And then history includes his uh, past history and his history with our story at the present. I think doing it this way is going to give you guys a, a better feel, not just for the character, but the story and the genre of our manga. Um, looking at some of my keywords here, I'm kind of, I'm starting to realize that part of our world may not make a lot of sense without explanation. So uh, I'll be explaining tidbits of our world um, which, you know, will give you guys a better feel for our story and perhaps the early plot, at least for Chapin anyway. Um, Chapin is a very calm, relaxing, very quiet, very humble, and very intelligent man who is more in tune with things than you'd probably realize and more in tune with, in tune with things than he probably leads on. Uh, despite being human, Chapin is 256 years old. He has overlooked Thimbri, which is the city where the majority of our story takes place, for a long time, and so he acts as kind of the protecting elder. Chapin's easygoing personality seems to draw respect, and his quiet demeanor, despite his rather impressive past, is a testament to, a to his charisma and ability. That definitely sounded scripted, didn't it? <laughs> All right, anyway, um, as this picture comes together, you guys are going to notice kind of the facial features and soft and uh, gentle aura that we kind of made for Chapin. Um, he's a well-respected character throughout all of Duno. Um, features and specs on the character. Now this is something that's going to be very easily described. Uh, I'll be using this section to kind of give you an idea of his capabilities, what makes him the warrior he is now, and this is also kind of part of the character review that I'll have to do some explaining on. First off, magic in our world is referred to as the weave, short for the weave of magic. Our characters, uh, every single one of them, have been put together in a way that's very detailed and unique. Um, our goal is to kind of create characters with different abilities, different features, and most importantly, different points of view. Now, I kind of might stand alone on this here, but I was a huge D&D &D fan back in the day, and um, when I put a character together, I made sure he was unlike anything I had ever created before. I wanted him really unique. So, for you D&D &D nerds out there, uh, if you're like me, you can probably get a grasp of how much detail goes into each and every character, as far as abilities go. Now that doesn't mean that each character has an array of special abilities. Um, in fact, Rona characters are built more on their mishaps and how they overcome their specific weaknesses rather than mass amounts of abilities. Uh, we think this makes for better character development, and you know I think it makes for better fight scenes as well. Um, in order to get a full grasp of Chapman's ability, you have to get a feel for his background. So let's start with that first. I guess I'll kind of jump back and forth between his abilities and background since you know, like in this case, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, in Chapin's youth, he was born with natural ability to manipulate the weave. Um, the weave contains nine different strands, uh, if you will. Uh, each strand contains a different form of magic. Um, strands range from alteration, which is like blast attacks, to like illusion, which is like invisibility. Uh, in, in total, there are nine. So um, there are very few who are born with the ability to manipulate the weave. Uh, those that are are normally born with the ability to manipulate just one of the nine. So I hope I'm not losing you guys yet on this. Um, it's considered like a real great, mm, a great blessing, I guess, and uh, normally separates the good warriors from the great ones. Uh, Chapman was born with the power, power to manipulate just one particular weave. Now, at this time, I'm actually not going to uh, reveal which which weave it is that he can uh, manipulate. Um, I'm just going to leave that a secret for now. So, anyway, uh, he was sent to a school of magic uh, to develop his powers, and um, that was when he was in his early teens. So. Chapin's uh, training was cut short, though. Um, he was only there for four years, and um, he was then drafted into war. Um, the war is now called the Duno Region War. Now, the war would eventually decide the future ruler of what was a, once a chaotic region and would become the Duno Region. And in the end, Lord Macon, which is who Chapin served under, claimed victory. And, um, but that's a whole other story altogether. 
Okay, so because his training was cut short, his ability to cast the weave is limited. He can only use scrolls to manipulate the weave, um, which has its ups and downs. The downside is he can only cast spells using a scroll. Uh, that means, you know, no, he cannot, no matter how many times he's used the scroll, cast a spell from memory. He must use a scroll every single time. And once he uses the scroll, it dissipates. So the restrictions here are rather obvious. Um, however, because he's never finished his training, he has been using scrolls this way for a really long time. Um, meaning he can now cast spells of greater power since he doesn't need to memorize them. So, to put it simply, he needs a scroll to cast magic, but can cast magic that maybe typically only a great wizard could cast, so long as he has that scroll. <clears throat> now, these remember, these scrolls aren't... Uh, these are hard to come by, and um, he's only mastered the ability to read scrolls. He has not mastered the ability to create them. But, he has been around for 256 years, um, in which he has become an avid scroll collector for at least over 100 so uh, now back to his background a little bit though. Um, it should be noted that Chapin left his training when he was 17. I already mentioned that. Uh, he did not volunteer but was taken to Warnstead. Um, he was given a crash test course um, in training, I guess, on how to use a sword. So uh, another note here is um, 16 is the legal age of an adult in Rona. When you become 16, you're allowed to drink, smoke, uh, you're eligible to be drafted into war. So, uh, we're not trying to apply that's the way it should be, but that's just the way it is in Rona. Uh, so, he was familiarized with swordplay with in just a few weeks and put on the front lines as a typical foot soldier. Um, now, his previous master at the School of Magic he was training at um, gave his struggling student at the time a variety of scrolls that were used to keep Chapin, uh, who was a very novice warrior, alive in such a chaotic situation, being on the front lines. Um, there are multiple factors to the war that Chapin played in. Um, however, these play such a vital role to the main plot of our manga that I really feel like I'd be giving too much away at this point to tell you his role in the victory of the war. So I'm going to have to move past that. Now these aren't things that I'm, I'm going to keep forever, but at this point I don't, I don't want to give those things away. Um, they're really vital. Um, anyway, um, after the war for the Duno region, Chapin was given two bracelets. Uh, you might notice he's being drawn on his wrists. Um, they each carry approximately a hundred years of life within. Now this doesn't apply that um, he can stop aging by any means, but it slows down the aging process dramatically, um, hence the 256 years old. Chapin also carries a magical champion sword of the Duno region. Um, this sword allows its wielder to actually determine whether or not somebody's lying to him. Also, he currently wears boots of springing, which gives uh, this rather old looking uh, man here extraordinary agility and speed. Uh, I guess that's all I can really reveal about Chapin's magical items in history at this point. Um, I won't really get into how we got those items right now because we're kind of limited on time. Um, but it should be noted that Chapin has become extremely proficient in his fighting style, uh, which is called secondhand fighting. The fighting style um, we developed uh, for a, war to, a warrior to use a one-handed weapon with two hands. It's an old style. It's one he's learned uh, just before entering the battlefield, the one he did a crash course test on. Um, now, um, 256 years later, well, not quite, but um, he's teaching lessons to those who want to learn this 250-year-old fighting style. Now, more recently, Chapman has been given orders to protect a certain magical item of extraordinary power. The responsibility is given to him because he, above anyone, is the most trustworthy and loyal warrior Duno has to offer. This task will not be an easy one. There are others who search for the stone. Others who will do anything to get it. I'll be getting to this character next time. Thanks for watching.